Hello, I'm Greg, and it's time for another Tom Take. Atlantic Beach is where I'm at. Yep, this is it. Get the camera straight here. Smoking some old Toby. Old Toby, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a, um, yeah, but Mike's one. I think it's a uh, Country Squire tobacco. I believe. I believe the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings movie people said they had to change the name of it because of the takeoff of their movies and all. And they had right many tobaccos like that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. There's a video I want y'all to see. Uh, Rinky Dink, Mr. Dink has, has, has laid down the law, oh, boys, y'all, I tell you why, it was a great video. I'm going to put the, uh, the, uh, uh, description, the link to, the, in the description <laughs> of that video. Mm, what a great video that was. It really was. Mm. I shared that to my whole family thread, and, and uh, some of my boys came back and said, wow, that, that was, that was a good video. Yeah, it was that for sure. Um, yeah, uh, on my last video, I talked about uh, you know going to the Formula One races in the RV and uh, and um, uh, so, somebody said something about uh, in the comment section about the sounds of the V sixes compared to the V eights and V tens and stuff like that. Yeah, in in the early two thousands. The screams of the of the cars in those days were well, that was awesome. I'll never forget the day we got to the track. It was during practices, like on a Friday, and we're, we we pull in on the road that's next to the front straightaway. And and if you and if you remember, the Formula One course ran the Indianapolis track backwards about halfway of the course. About halfway of the, the of the oval, you know, so they came into between two turn two and turn one and two of the of the Indy, Indy track of the oval, and then and then came fast around turn one backwards, head towards turn four, then they then they went into a road course inside the uh, inside the uh, the oval. We pulled in right there at turn one, and we're just riding down the side, and here comes a car. Who knows? It could have been a sour. I don't know. But the screams of these things were awesome. Uh, after being there, I have a tendency to think it was it was probably a Ferrari engine anyway. Uh, and, it, and it came came around turn one and just screaming down. Oh, it, it was that was just something that raised raised a hair off my head. And I'm telling you why it was awesome. Good grief, it was awesome. And that right there is why I I haven't gone back to a Formula One race since since those those sounds. Because the sounds of the cars were was kind of like one major draw for me, you know. Get you a torch lighter, y'all. If y'all are ever outside in the wind like this, make life a lot easier for you. Just don't, just don't shoot it on the side of your uh, briar. That's all, you know. Um, yeah, I was thinking about smoking my corn cop, my, uh, 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 <laughs> Missouri Mershom. And I don't know what it is, y'all. I, I buy corn cobs. I buy Missouri Mershom corn cobs. I want to support the industry, but it's just me. I just, there's something about the feel. I think it's more of the weight. The weight, the corn cobs are so much lighter and, and you get, massive stem weight and and it's kind of like a balance in my hand is it doesn't feel proper i don't know why i don't know why that is but it comes from so many years of smoking briar pipes probably and, and and liking them yeah what a nice day check it out let's see if i can turn you around here let's see how, see the sights uh oh <laughs> at least this part up here there you go. Everybody's enjoying their Saturday. <laughs> that dog is 
having a fit. Chasing after these seagulls right here. And um, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, the sound, the sounds of the V6s a day, apparently they have to, they have to run them at low revs to get as much power as they can out of them. It's not like the, uh, the, uh, the V8s, V10s. Um, that's all I can figure. The reason why they don't, they don't scream them like they used to. On race day, I think. The top RPM, you, you would usually be about uh, 18,000 RPMs. And I think during some of the tests, um, shoot, then things, would, then things would get up to 22 or 24,000 RPMs. I mean, it's talking about a scream like a whistle in there about, you know, it's all it sounded like. One big thing about going to a Formula One race back in those days, I don't know what it's like today. I'm sure it's probably somewhat close to it. Um, when the cars downshift, it sounds like a shotgun going off from you about 10 feet away. That's what it sounds like. When they downshift, it pow, 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 pow. And that's something that you don't get uh, when you watch it on television. You just don't get that, get that, that massive bang. And it was, it was really funny because uh, when the Ferraris would go by down the straightaway, they had they had a particular sound to them. You know, hear the scream of the engine, but but there was kind of like a a mechanical grind. But then when the McLarens would go by, it was really exaggerated. I mean, it's like a grinding gears or something. I mean, it was it was disturbing sounding to a mechanic person that I, I, I rebuilt a lot of engines, especially when I was uh, late teens and early twenties, and um, and. Uh, that was disturbing to hear that sound, and I still to this day I don't know why that sound was produced, really. And it's and that's and it's a sound that you just don't get watching on television, really. Oh, Toby, that's some good stuff, y'all. Woo! I don't know what the name is of, of it is today after they, after they made the name change, but uh. <coughs> But yeah, they had to change all the names of the, of the uh, Lord of the Ring to back as it had, you know. What a great day. Kind of chilly out here, especially with the wind blowing like it does. And it's always blowing at the beach. No doubt about it. Huh. Close to the beach you get, harder's blowing. Probably see right many videos like this or from this area. I'm working over here now. When I'm doing this type of work, usually how, how it works out, I'll I'll, um, I'll, um, I'll trailer my motorcycle to the to the house and, and leave my truck and my and my trailer there. And then be it on the weekends, just shuttle it back and forth to the house. That's it's about a couple hours away, something like that. Awesome. Love this place. Oh yeah, before I leave you, um somebody asked in one of my videos, uh, what was the number of that pipe that I was smoking? And it's a Savinelli pipe. This is it right here. And when I bought it, it had a short stem, and I and I just I just put one of the Amazon stems on it. Had drill it out, modify it for myself. And that's one thing that you can always do. If you have a pipe that doesn't quite fit you, modify it, y'all. You can you can have your custom pipe, and you will love it. But um, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you a, a couple of steel pictures I took this morning before I left the house of uh of the uh of what what's written under here. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, a seven six something. There's another digit there, and then it's an ex. If you guys know what this is, let me know. So I guess a, a bent Dublin, maybe you would call it. But it's a really cool looking pipe. I like the Sea Rock rustification on it.
feels real good to my hand. And oh yeah, it's kind of like kind of like this this Avenilla here, it's the same type of uh, sea rock rustication. Uh, thanks, Brian Quilter. <laughs> I sure do appreciate it. What a gift you gave me. Jeez, I love this pipe. It's an awesome thing. Yeah. Anyway, I'll see you next next time, guys. Bye.